you ever look into the world of competitive fighting games, people will throw out terms such as neutral or advantage and disadvantage. But what do these terms really mean? Today we are taking an excursion into the neutral of fighting games. Our goals today are simple. We want to define what the neutral game is, why does it matter, and how can understanding the neutral improve your game. Let's take our time today doing a deep dive into the so-called neutral game. Defining the neutral. The neutral can be defined as the phase of the game where both players are free to move, attack, and defend. No one player is in a complete advantage or disadvantage at this point. The options to get out of neutral are different depending on which game you are playing. So for example, let's take a look at Street Fighter V. The game of Street Fighter V looks incredibly simple from the outside looking in. There aren't many technical boundaries for players in this current iteration of the series due to the changes in combo structure with the buffering system as well as changes to general mechanics of the core gameplay, like wake-up timings. This makes the game rely more on playing neutral to find clean hits for good damage and okizeme. The really interesting part of watching competitor Street Fighter V match is how players play neutral and run with any little opening that they can find. They catch you dashing, they check the dash, they catch you jumping, they punish the jump. It's a really interesting part and dynamic of the game. At the end of the day, fighting games boil down to a complex game of rock, paper, scissors. If you jump, you can get hit out of the air for that jump. If you use your projectile, your opponent has a chance to jump over your projectile and punish you for it. And if you try to attack and miss, then your opponent can take advantage of your extended limb and punish that limb for a combo. This combined with characters having different sizes, ranges of attack, jump speeds, and special moves creates a really complex mind game to leave players and rewards them for learning the game's general mechanics. However, like I said earlier, the neutral can be massively different depending on the game you're playing. So let's take a look at a different type of fighting game, Dragon Ball Fighters. In Dragon Ball Fighters, there are a plethora of options added to the neutral state over Street Fighter V. So let's take a quick look at some of those options here. Firstly, you can dash on the ground for much longer distances than you can in Street Fighter V. You can choose to dash all the way to the corner of the stage if you like, in comparison to Street Fighter V where characters can only dash at a specific distance and that's it. Secondly, you can change your jump height, jump angle, and falling speeds at will in Dragon Ball Fighters in comparison to Street Fighter V where characters just have set jump heights and falling speeds per character with different aerial actions that each character can perform in the air. This gives you a lot more freedom in the air compared to more traditional fight games. Additionally, you can dash in the air as well as block in the air, giving you a little bit more options to compare to Street Fighter V in terms of aerial mobility. Furthermore, there are character assist attacks that can be formed from your backup characters provide more options for approaching and pressuring your opponent, the list goes on. This fundamentally changes how you should be playing neutral in comparison to Street Fighter. It's a completely different game. Since you have a wider array of options at your disposal, you have the freedom to test your opponent's reactions to attacks in many different ways. The key is finding which option create an opportunity for you to be able to take an advantageous state over your opponent. And you can do that by either calling an assist to help push your advantage, or by punishing a risky extension from your opponent. The general rock, paper, scissor idea is still there. There's a lot more added to the game to make it a little bit more complex in comparison to Street Fighter V. Why does playing a good neutral matter? The answer is simple. The more you know about the game you're playing, the options that are available to you, the better you become at the game itself. Let's think back to the rock, paper, scissors analogy again. If you were playing rock, paper, scissors, and you somehow did not know that scissors was an option that you could throw to win the game, do you think it would be easy to meet someone else who knows that scissors is an option that can be thrown? 
I don't think it would go very well for you. Let's think back on Street Fighter V. When the round starts, there are many different options available to both you and your opponent. So let's say you're using Ryu versus M. Bison. The match starts and you want to get some space, so you throw out a fireball. However, one of Bison's V skills, his V skill 1, gives him the ability to absorb projectiles and throw them back at his opponent. Now, if you were aware that that was an option for the character before the match started, you might not have been willing to put the risk in to put yourself at a more disadvantageous position at the start of the match. And God forbid, your opponent jumps over your fireball and hits you with a full combo. You do not want to put yourself in a losing position at the very start of a match due to you not knowing that about the character. Situations like these occur very frequently in fighting games, so you want to be on that side who has more information than your opponent at all times. And that will definitely increase your chances of winning a game over them. How can understanding neutral improve your game? Now that we know what the neutral game is and why it's important, what steps can you take in improving your game? The first thing to do is to learn the game you're playing inside and out. Be aware of what you are and are not able to do with the characters that are available to you. Even if you do not like a specific character to play as, knowing their strengths and weaknesses can help you win matches against players who do use those characters. The more information you have about a character, a stage, or your opponent, the better chances you have of winning the game. Understanding the neutral is understanding the general mechanics of what you can and cannot do in a given game. You need to become a student and learn these core mechanics to truly enhance your abilities as a player. There is no simple guide that can just tell you exactly how you are supposed to play neutral. It all depends on who you are as a person, the characters you're playing as, the maps that you're playing on in some cases, your opponent that you're playing as, your opponent's character that they're using, and what information is known between the both of you. So if you know the more information than your opponent, the chances of you winning a game are a lot higher than the opponent who does not have that information. And that is it. Thank you for watching this video if you made it this far. <laughs> and of course, uh, if you have any other questions uh, in the comment section below, don't be afraid to ask anything about how to play neutral or specific fighting games. And I'll definitely try to help you out as much as I can. Uh, of course, if you like this video, don't hesitate to like, comment, subscribe. Really appreciate it. You can really use it since my channel is pretty small right now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Hope you have a great day.